kind of no pressure there then. Uh, Dominic set this up very well for me because in a sense, I think the challenge for creative agencies is to push harder for better ideas. Um, I have uh, a confession, which is my first experience of radio advertising was a pretty dismal one. I worked on a brand called Vine Products and Whiteways, and they wanted an ad for a brand called Rougemont Castle, which I bet none of you have heard of. And I'm very glad the ad is nowhere to be found. I did look for it, and I'm quite glad it's not here. Uh, the second thing I should make a confession about is actually I'm going to show a sort of play, lots of radio ads that I didn't do, but I think which stimulate the debate around what makes great advertising. One of the things that's been really nice preparing for this was actually listening to loads and loads of radio ads. And the RAB a while ago did 100 best radio ads, and if you get a chance to get hold of that CD, get it because some of the work in there is fantastic. Uh, the crazy power of radio, that's how I've termed the presentation, and actually the massive opportunity for creativity on radio, the chance we all have to develop better radio. And I have to move at speed, because I had that great moment of I had lots and lots of ads to share, therefore I'm going to be moving at some speed. Uh, so I want to celebrate, because it's the 20th anniversary of RAB, uh, the creativity of radio advertising, but also send out some clear, I think, challenges to us all. Um, we need to reassess how we use radio advertising. We need to think about the approach to creativity, how we brief it, how we build the skill sets in creative people to do it. And we need to understand the power of the medium and its heritage. How do we use the channels? How do we use day parts? How do we think about grabbing attention? Um, I thought it was a bit easy for me to go and go, here's the ones I like. So what I did was I actually went around and spoke to loads and loads of different creatives and said, OK, what ads did you like? What ads did you like writing? What ads? grabbed you and actually their eyes lit up and that's a hard thing to do with creatives because they're a cynical bunch so getting them to actually light up at all was a good start and actually all of them came up with ads that they loved from when they were kids or ads they wish they'd done and what I'm trying to do is show you a selection of those uh, in the next five ten minutes but the first sort of area that I got into is playing with people's imagination radio is a fantastic way of us tricking people finding ways of lulling people into hearing our message. And I've just chosen one example of that. We've all got to die sometime. And what better way to go than to die in sleep? Warm, comfortable, your favorite piece of music playing, found by your side. The thin wheels slip down loosely through your fingers as your car veers gently across the lane at 70 miles an hour. Onto the soft verge and straight into a concrete bridge. If you're driving long distances this holiday, plan ahead to allow enough time to take regular breaks. Think. Don't drive tired. I think the Third Think campaign is a great example of how often people listen to radio in cars and therefore how relevant that messaging is as you're driving around. And the whole of that campaign has worked incredibly powerfully on radio. Uh, the second is, this is one of those creatives love moments again. We can be really hard hitting. We can be really challenging. We can get away with stuff on radio that we can't get away with anywhere else. And I've got two ads. Um, and I think I make no, no apology. I think this presentation is going to make you laugh, might make you cry, and it's certainly going to shock you. Um, and the first one of these, I think, is just a genius ad. <coughs> I mean, there is a truth that men will not want to listen to that message. So how do you find a way of engaging them? And also using someone like Ricky Gervais, who started in radio. And actually, I think often, in my experience, if you work with celebrities, personalities, they want to write it with you. So you'll find with that, Ricky probably wrote most of that. And I think that's part of the power of how you engage certain celebrities and people that shortcut you to a message especially aimed at men about sticking your finger up. Yeah, it's not a message you particularly want to hear. 
but I think they do it in an incredible way. Uh, this second ad is, is actually incredibly shocking, and I sort of make no apology for this representing, I think, the power of radio in a really powerful way to change behaviours. Women's aid work the public to help stop domestic violence by calling the police if they hear it. We want people to get used to the idea that making a call stops the sounds of domestic abuse. The following sounds are typical. This is a woman being punched in the face. This is a woman's fingers being trapped in the door. This is a woman's jaw being broken. The sounds are distressing. We understand if you never want to hear them again. In fact, we welcome it. To stop the sounds, call 0800 I think it's interesting what Julian was talking about because one of the power, powerful ways that communicates is muffling the sound. So actually what happens is, as you're listening to it, is you become engaged in trying to pick up the sound. And that's an unbelievable thing that no other medium can deliver. Um, capturing the real every day. I can't really think of another title for this. This is about capturing the everyday moments and you put yourself into it. You can't help it. You kind of go, oh, that's me. And actually, if you listen and watch people, that half the people we know, including most of us, spend half our life talking to the radio in a rather stupid way. If you drive, in, drive down a road and you're in a, in a, in a um, traffic jam, you'll see people on their own in a car, not talking to their phone, talking at their radio. And I think one of the things that signals that level of engagement we have with radio is how we understand and we put ourselves into scenarios because it comes into our imagination. And here are two very old but absolutely fantastic examples of that. Sweetheart, catch it. Oh, baby. Do you think these trousers are going to have them? No, no, they're all right. All right, just all right. So you think my bum is fun? No, no, you said that. I didn't. I think it looks fun. No, love. You look gorgeous. OK, now come on, the cover works. You don't seem to look too tight. Well, no, no. Okay, maybe you should wear something different underneath, you know. What? Well, I mean, you know, your underwear is all sort of folded and, and creased up. I'm not wearing anything. Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet. The mild cigar. I was slightly nervous of playing that one because it was already in the day when everyone talks about sexism and I was like, oh no. But I think uh, the other part of that obviously is it's Hamlet. As soon as you hear that Sonic branding, you go, oh, I know that brand. I can feel it. Um, I've got to play another one because I think this is one of the top ten radio ads as voted by creatives. Um, and it's another Hamlet ad. Welcome to the group. I see you have a new member with us. Would you like to stand up and introduce yourself? What's even nicer is uh, when Hamlet was banned from TV, it did even better on radio. I mean, there's an irony you go when that campaign was on TV, you're never going to get it as good on radio. I think those two ads show how amazing that the medium is in delivering messaging. Um, Capturing the Real Every Day, uh, this is shamelessly one of ours, um, and it won an aerial, which was quite nice. It was, it was a while back, um, and I think this was about taking a really strong brand idea and converting it into radio and making all of us feel part of it. Except for all kinds of tricks and treats. Yeah. 
It's kind of great on radio. If you put that on telly, how cheesy would that be? Oh, it would be hideous. But actually, radio makes you want to smile and go along with it. Um, I think also the thing about radio is it can be incredibly and poignantly personal. You know, I, I think, without a doubt, this is one of the campaigns we developed where actually we're using radio to grab families and make families feel they should come together to eat together for one of the most boring products in the world. This is a message for Mrs. Fowler. Next Thursday, can you swap chips with my mummy Claire? Daddy's making pork chops with some yummy misto gravy. He said we can sit down and talk about me maybe having a rabbit like Archie has. He's called Speedy and he doesn't bite your fingers. Love from Anik Matthews. Make tonight your eye night. Um, this was one of the quotes from the creative. Even in a recession, you can open on a beach. Actually, most creatives want to open on a beach and fly there and do the TV ad. But actually, as someone said earlier, the cost effectiveness of doing radio is incredible. You can do so much stuff. Um, I think this is a really lovely example about the open on a beach. Summer fear is that time of year when people step out in pride, hold their head up high, not standing in puddles, in coats and boots in puddles. Me, I'm feeling fine, cause it's Malibu time. Tropical coconut and Caribbean rum. Time to call my friends around and party. After all, it is Friday. <coughs> Malibu, the sun always shines when it pours. I think the other point of that is how beautifully written that is. And one of the things I think the creative agencies have got to go back to is fantastic copywriting. Radio gives you the chance to write beautifully. And I just listen to that ad and go, it's lyrical, it's beautiful, it's fitting to the occasion. And guess what? It's some bloke in a sound booth. You know, it's not very complicated to do. Um, this is a personal favourite. We'll want to write a song. Um, I actually think that if you talk to a lot of creatives, and this is probably pre-X Factor, uh, they all quite like the idea of writing their own songs. Uh, this is a personal favourite, not just because it's for beer, which is clearly a personal favourite, um, but also because actually this campaign ran for about a year and it really interrupted the way people use radio. One, because they use very long time lengths, and two, they just used remarkable humour. One of the amazing things about that was that, that they ran those ads across a year and I was at a football match where the whole of one end had re had sung that and then ad added their own lines attacking the other team. I think the other point is anyone that can make a Chinese menu into a song, that, sorry, that is proper genius. Um, Consumers want to engage in perform. I mean, we've talked a lot today about social media, the impact of social media, and the challenges of radio's role. Um, this is a very good example of being given a brief for Subway, which said, we're launching a uh, sweet onion chicken teriyaki sub, um, and uh, it's going to be three quid, and can you do an ad? And actually what they came back with was we created a promotion online, which then meant that the winner got to record uh, a version in a radio ad. To celebrate 40 years of karaoke, Subway and Coke bring the sweet onion chicken karaoke deal. Take it away.
high chances of a thousand pounds. We're even seeing the next app. Go to valueworthsingingabout.com. Suddenly, eat fresh. Participation and prices may vary. What was ironic was that was the winner. So you can only imagine what the other 3,000 sounded like. Um, <laughs> they were not good. Uh, the Elvis version of that was really interesting. Um, I think the other part of that which was fascinating was there wasn't any money. We just had a really sort of small brief with a small budget to try and create an event. And it did phenomenally well. And literally, you know, people all flew in to do their rendition of that to stick in the radio ads. Um, I suppose in summary, Playing with people's imagination, there's such an opportunity for us to play with people's imagination, both sort of benevolently and malevolently. I think there's, we can be more hard hitting, you know, messaging, we can educate incredibly well through the power of radio. Capture the real every day. We can capture real every day moments in a way that isn't cheesy, isn't rubbish, doesn't make you cringe. We can do it in a way which is actually very poignant because when you're listening to it, you put your own imagination into the scenario. It can be incredibly personal. Because actually listening to the radio is very personal. So this gives you the opportunity to be very personal. Uh, liberate from budgets. Uh, there's never been a better year probably to have this debate, but actually there's massive opportunity to do really creative work with not a lot of money. Um, and I always think slightly randomly love a song or a jingle. I think we all do. And actually most of us have got favourite jingles and favourite songs that we love that have been used. Um, and one last thought. Um, what, don't be afraid of terms and conditions. I think there's this big thing going on which we've got to fight, which is the 43,000 terms and conditions that end up causing immeasurable pain. I remember once doing a radio ad for a bank where when I was getting um, the work approved, they came back and said, we think you need 42 seconds of terms and conditions. And I'd go, I've only got a 30-second ad. I could struggle. I could phone the media agency and try and get 40 seconds, but I haven't got an ad. I've just got terms and conditions. But I just thought I'd show you one example of how to get around that. I think. Buy Dr. Pepper, you can win an American Pie two star vacation. What's the worst that could happen? Dr. Pepper might express the dangerous life of your very opinion and promotions. You could win a trip to California. Dr. Pepper weighs responsibility for any loss of luggage that the passport or effects of tickets to the foreign travel. There's over a quarter of a million prizes to be won instantly. Simply look under the ring pool or behind the label. Dr. Pepper will be responsible for any activity. And should have been raised around some jubilation while standing underneath the passport and seeing fan. I hope that's vaguely stimulated the audience to think, actually, I think, and aimed at us as creative agencies, is to go, there's masses of opportunity in radio, and I don't think we're using it as well as we could be. Thank you.